Hello. I came here today to present a runtime that we are building to enable volunteering computing in the Web3, Web3 space. So if you think about the computing like landscape nowadays, we have <clears throat> some servers running in data centers, let's say in WS, which could be like three million machines there, which seems a lot. But if you compare it to the number of Raspberry Pi sold in a single year alone, it's like one tenth. And this is still very few machine, machines compared to how many personal computers are sold in a single year alone. So now imagine we have all of these machines all around the world, and they are sitting mostly idle. Even now that I'm presenting my talk, 15 of my 16 cores are just idling, waiting for work to do. And it would be super nice if we could put all these idle resources to work, right? And this is not a new concept. Uh, it's called volunteer computing, which was coined in the 90s. One of the famous projects were uh, SETI at home. And uh, it would be awesome if we could leverage volunteer computing for running tasks that we need in our decentralized networks, right? So for example, if we have a trustless network where there is a bunch of nodes operated by, dif by different people, some of them might want to cheat the system, and we need to detect it somehow. And to do, th do that, we need preferably a large fleet of nodes that are difficult to detect by those cheaters that will actually do the checks and tell us when somebody is cheating. Uh, for example, a witness is building a challenger that will uh, combine the network link of multiple peers together to verify that somebody has 10 gigabyte connection available, which is quite difficult to do if you are not on a 10 gigabyte connection yourself. Uh, the retrieve protocol, which was mentioned a few days ago, they need referees to uh, check that the content is retrievable, and there are many more use cases like this. Now, of course, you can build a node like this yourself. That's easy, right? But there is a lot of uh, yak shaving involved. For example, first you need to build binaries for all the different platforms you want to support. Then you need to build installers for the different application stores. You need to sign them and notarize them with Apple. You need to figure out how to do auto upgrading. And then the most important, important part, you need to find the people to actually run your node and get it preferably like millions of them, which is a lot of work to get there. So that's like the beginning, and then once you start building the code, you realize that you need to ensure that the user machine stays safe. So if I'm running your node, I don't want your node to leak my private data. And you also need to figure out how to constrain the resource consumption so that your node doesn't eat all of my disk storage or doesn't consume all the network bandwidth so that everybody else in my household cannot watch his, their uh, Netflix videos or do homework. And then in the Web3 space, it's also quite difficult how can we verify that my node actually did the job which it was supposed to do because these checkers can uh, cheat as well, right? So <clears throat> who is going to check the checker? And finally, it would be really nice if we could figure out some incentive schemes going beyond just feeling good about running a node that's contributing to the network. And so we would like to solve some of these challenges and give you a tool that allow you to build the node just focus on the business logic and without having to uh, think about all of these underlying uh, things you need to uh, solve first. And that's why we started to build runtime, which we call Xenia. Xenia is the first flower that was blossoming in space, in the International Space Station. They grow Xenia from a seed. Uh, you can find the pictures. It was very pretty. And what is it? So Xenia is a JavaScript and a WebAssembly runtime, which means we can run anything that compiles to JavaScript or anything that compiles to WebAssembly, like Rust or Go. Uh, we offer web platform APIs, so for example, Web Crypto, so that you can do all that cryptographic things like handshakes and encryption. We offer, provide Fetch API for making HTTP requests because we want to make it easy to integrate with the existing Web2 space. Uh, we are shipping a built-in Rust Li P2P node so that you can also talk to nodes in the peer-to-peer uh, -peer networks. And very soon, this runtime will be shipped to all instances of Filecoin Station, which people are already running on their computers, which means if you write a module for Xenia, you will get user adoption immediately. Under the hood, uh, we are using Dino, which is a successor to Node.js, and it has some very nice properties. First of all, uh, it's composed of multiple modules, Rust crates, which you can use on your own, beginning with uh, Rusty V8, which is a Rust crate that wraps V8 into Rust API that's easier to use than C++. On 
top of that, there is Dino Core, which is a framework which makes it super easy to expose Rust functions into the JavaScript land, and they take care of transforming data structure between JavaScript scripts encoded in UTF-16, I believe, and Rust side of sync. And what is very important, they deal with uh, async Rust and uh, promises in the JavaScript, so they can convert your uh, Rust futures into uh, JavaScript promises. And then they have a bunch of crates providing web platform APIs, like Fetch API and Web Crypto API, so we are able to build on top of that as well. And then finally, we are adding uh, our custom Xenia stuff. So there are APIs to integrate with stations so that we can report what your module is doing and the operations or APIs for uh, calling lib P2P. And we want to add more uh, features soon. And I prepared a demo, so let's see if it works. Uh, I have a small module written that I can run in the Xenia runtime. And the module will at random choose a peer, a lib P2P peer, and then try to do a ping and measure how long does it take to do the round trip. And then I'm reporting this data to InfluxDB because it's easy to set up. And while this is running, I would like to show you the code, which is super short. Oh, here we go. So it's like 70 lines of code. We have a li li list of addresses which we want to test. This is coming from various bootstrap lists I found. Then we have the, oh, is it too small? Better? Okay. Then we have a probe function, and this is like the, the core of this whole module. We will generate some random payload, but that's how the ping protocol is specified. Then we call Xenia API to make a request response style transaction uh, with a given peer address using the ping protocol and sending the payload data. We will get back the response, which we don't need here, so we just discard it. And you can see here I can use async await in JavaScript. Under the hood, it's using async Rust, but as a Xenia module builder, I don't need to care about that. And then the second part is recording the data, sending it to InfluxDB. And fortunately, InfluxDB provides a REST API, so all I do is use a fetch API to make a post HTTP request to InfluxDB to record a new data point. And then I can easily put it all together using a infinite loop, hey, it's fun, where I choose a random peer, then I run my check, run my probe, record the data to the uh, influx DB, then I can report that the job was completed, so that if I quickly show you, oh, I don't have a station running, it will show you a nice counter, how many jobs you contributed to the network, and then finally I sleep for a second before I start the loop again and again and again. And after it has been running for a while, I can show you a dashboard, uh, let's see. Ah, okay, let's try again. Oh, nice, and here you can see a chart. Can you, can you see it? It's at the bottom, which shows uh, round trip types aggregated uh, for every minute for different peers. So we can see some peers are very, very slow, the orange one. Some are much faster, the uh, Kian one at the bottom. So, 70 lines of code, and we have a module which can run on 80 different computers around the world and do useful uh, work for your peer-to-peer uh, -peer network. And uh, that's for the demo. This is where we are right now. What is next? We would like to add more APIs to allow more useful modules to be built. So first of all, we need some sort of a persistence, maybe a block store, maybe a key value store. We would like to, to offer easy integration with IPFS. Uh, in the first step, we want to allow you to fetch content from IPFS, maybe using Lassie. Then, of course, we also will want to store content and provide it to the network. We want to enforce limits on resource usage so that even if your code runs away and start doing a lot of more work than it should, then the platform will make sure you are not making the machine unusable. And we also would like to integrate with FVM so that you can read actor state, submit messages to actor, work with the smart contracts. And that's it. Thank you for the attention. You can find the uh, runtime on our GitHub and you can follow me out on social networks like Mastodon or others. Do we have time for questions? One question. One 
what is the incentive for a node to actually run these workloads for you? That is, that is the question. That is the question we are trying to find the answer for, and uh, we still haven't figured it out. So right now, we think that we are leaving this in the hands of module authors, to be honest. So if you want to run on Xenia, you need to figure out what kind of incentive structure we can put in place. But we hope to find some framework to make it easier for future builders. But we are not there yet. Thank you. How do you guarantee quality of service? Like, um, what if the workload takes up all my compute power and whatever I'm trying to do, it takes it away? Or how do you guarantee, like, if I give you a workload, then you would return to me in a specified amount of time? Like, how does that happen? Well, you cannot, you cannot, cannot guarantee quality of service with volunteer computing. If I do this, then the node is gone, and there is nothing we can do about it. So as we are seeing it, um, uh, volunteer computing is suitable for a certain kinds of problems. So for example, if you want to do some sort of like probing or checking that to verify the nodes are, are up and running, then you probably don't care if it happens right now or within five minutes. If, it's, if this check is performed by one node or five nodes at parallel, it's usually okay. But if you want to build like DCDN, then no, you cannot use Xenia for that. 